Good morning, folks. We're watching the plasma filament activity around the limbs, highly active but at small scale. We released part three of the stellar catastrophe evidence last night with some perspective, and this morning we start stellar as always with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun continues to present those small patchy equatorial coronal holes as the bright point continues its rotation on the south. All of the sunspots have decayed beneath those bright umbral magnetic fields. 171 angstrom view here also shows the magnetic shadows of the filaments dancing in the corona. The solar wind continues calming this morning after its plasma speed peak on the 26th from the purple line. The waning telemetry from what was already a weak stream leaves geomagnetism yawning this morning. Folks, a story about a slow meteor broke from the West Pacific yesterday, but it was simply too slow and that was obvious from the start. The brightness to break up and disappearance took more than 10 seconds, and indeed, folks, it was no meteor. It was a Chinese Long March 5 rocket that they had launched 150 minutes prior, breaking up upon re-entry. It was gorgeous, though. Folks, we'll quickly churn through the science news here because we've got a podcast to do for the website today, and I want to get you another special video tonight, so... Here we go. Folks, there are two ways space weather can impact earthly technology. Charged particles directly strike the products as protons, cosmic rays, or relativistic electrons from the Van Allen belts are forced into the atmosphere. And the other way is geomagnetic induction. This ring of current induces another ring of current in the ground. And the same happens beneath the equatorial electrojet, even if it doesn't light up like the aurora very often. Those currents are what takes out power grids, and the first ever analysis of the Mexican grid has been made. They found that the peripheries of the grid are most vulnerable, but sadly that's where the primary infrastructure is found. They say that one three to 10 hour geomagnetic storm of sufficient intensity could cause the Mexican power infrastructure to suffer extreme damage, which is one reason the long needed split of indices is hopefully on the way. Folks, there's no bombshell in this paper, but it does promote the concept of having different indices for geomagnetism and then geoelectric risk from induction. I don't know if this is like a next month thing or 10 years from now type thing, but we need it desperately. When it comes to how space weather affects the climate and short-term meteorology, it is indeed the particles working most of all, and a great marking of that correlation between the solar wind and surface pressure can be seen along with the interaction upon cloud microphysics and atmospheric electricity, with a nice nod to the global electric circuit mechanism pathway for that energy integration. The primary missing piece, as far as I can tell from the mainstream modeling of this solar forcing, is indeed the subject of a special video that is scheduled for January. But here's a clue this morning. Earth's pitiful version of the solar wind, the equatorial ion wind, the ion fountain. We actually have these here and at the polar region called the polar ion wind. And these and their interaction with the solar wind from the sun seem utterly ignored in their mix. Again, we'll dive more into that one in January. But right now, we're heading out into deep space to find a galaxy hiding in plain sight again. This one about 7 billion light years away, completely obscured by dust until Wise was able to pierce through that veil. It's another reminder about how little we see, and while it does not add to the Big Bang cosmology timeline problems like the ones at 13 billion light years away or anything, it is somewhat of another problem that it's not just the first galaxies obscured by the dust. Here, they only had to see through half of their idea of what the universal age is for this one, and they still couldn't see it without wise. Of course, we are alluding to the dusty plasma answer to the missing mass problem in cosmology, or at least an enormous chunk of it. Watch our plasma cosmology movie linked below. It necessarily precedes the climate research, earthquake forecasting, and earth catastrophe cycle. On that front, we also have part three from last night linked below if you missed it. And now I'm off to podcast and make more videos. Hopefully I'll get back here to see you tonight Website members, I'll see you around lunch. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.